Welcome to Lesson 1C, Specific Heats and Ratio of Specific Heats. In this lesson, we'll review some more thermodynamic properties, namely the specific heats at constant volume and constant pressure. And we'll show how they simplify for an ideal gas. And we'll show their relationships to the specific ideal gas constant. And I'll show the values of these properties for air and do an example problem. First, some definitions. We define CV as del U del T with a subscript V, which indicates that this is the specific heat at constant volume, remembering that U is the specific internal energy. What does this mean? CV represents the rate of change of a specific internal energy with respect to temperature when the specific volume is held constant. That's what we mean by this subscript. Similarly, we define Cp as del H del T subscript P. This is the specific heat at constant pressure. And similarly, it's defined as the rate of change of specific enthalpy rather than specific internal energy with respect to temperature when pressure is held constant. That's why we call it the specific heat at constant pressure. For an ideal gas, it turns out that Cp is a constant, and Cv is also a constant. Thus, if you think about integrating these when Cp is a constant and Cv is a constant, U becomes Cv times T, and H becomes Cp times T. It also turns out that Cp and Cv are related to the specific gas constant R, namely Cp minus Cv is equal to R. Also for an ideal gas, we define gamma as the ratio of Cp over Cv. A couple comments about this. Some books, mostly thermo books, use K instead of gamma. This is actually the notation that we adopted in my fluid mechanics book. But most people who work in compressible flow use gamma. And gamma is a very important property for compressible flow. Gamma is simply called the ratio of specific heats. And if you ever forget which one goes on top and which on bottom, P comes before V in the alphabet, so P is on top. Now let's look at some relationships between Cp, Cv, R, and gamma. I already showed this equation. We do a little bit of math by dividing all terms by Cv. This gives us Cp over Cv minus Cv over Cv, which is 1, equal R over Cv. Well, we just define this as gamma, and so gamma minus 1 is R over Cv, which we can rewrite as Cv equal R over gamma minus 1. Let me ask the students a question. How can we do a similar thing for Cp instead of Cv? Well, I suppose that if we divide by Cp instead of Cv in that equation, you would be able to eliminate Cv when you substitute in for gamma. That's right, Sean. If we divide by Cp instead, this equation becomes 1 minus Cv over Cp equal R over Cp. Recognizing this as 1 over gamma and doing a little bit of algebra, we can show that Cp is R gamma over gamma minus 1. Now I'll give the values of these properties for air. Gamma equal 1.400. R, we've already shown, was 0 0.2870 kilojoule per kilogram K. Note that gamma has no units since it's dimensionless. If you plug in the two equations above for Cp and Cv, you get Cp equal 1.0045 kilojoule per kilogram K and Cv 0 0.7175 kilojoule per kilogram K. These are the values you should use for air. But the same equations hold for ideal gases that are not air. And I'll do an example here of such a case. A sample gas, which is not air, is in a pressurized container. We assume it's an ideal gas. We measure these properties, pressure, temperature, density, and Cv. Notice that when I type Cv, it's a lowercase c, as with Cp, and I use an Arial font for V since that's the font I use for volume. When I write Cv in these notes, 
I use a sort of a script V, so don't let that confuse you. We want to calculate R, C, P, and gamma for this gas, and the molecular weight. There's only one assumption in approximation, and that is that the gas is ideal. For part A, we use the ideal gas equation, P equal rho R T, and we want to solve for R, P over rho T. Well, we were given the pressure and the density, and the temperature is given in degrees C, but you must always convert to Kelvin by adding 273.15. And then we have unity conversion factors, so I'm going to move this down so that I could fit these. A kilonewton per meter squared is a kPa, a joule is a newton meter, and there's a thousand newtons per kilonewton. You can see that many of these units cancel, kPa, kilonewtons, newtons, and meters, leaving us with R equal 458.0254 joule per kilogram K. But the best I can do is four digits, so I give my final answer as 458.0 joule per kilogram K. But I keep all these digits from my calculator when I need to use R in other equations. Now let's calculate Cp and gamma. Cp minus Cv is R, therefore we can solve for Cp as R plus Cv, and Cv was given in this problem. So here I'll use my R with several additional digits to avoid round off error, and then the measured value of Cp, and one unity conversion factor is necessary, a thousand joules per kilojoule, so that these two units are consistent. This gives us CP as 1696.025, but again I give my answer to four significant digits, which I indicate by this period, and the units are joule per kilogram K. And I should have put my units here also for consistency, but this is the answer that I would report. Now we can calculate gamma, which is CP over CV, and plugging in our CP and our CV, the units cancel of course, and we get 1.36997, or my answer to four digits is gamma is 1.370. We can also try this equation to verify, plugging in our numbers for R and gamma, we get 1238.0 joule per kilogram K, which agrees with the given information. For part B, we need to calculate molecular weight. Well, recall that R is RU over M, so we can solve for molecular weight M as simply the universal gas constant over the specific gas constant. We know RU to four digits, and we had calculated R as 458.0254 joule per kilogram K. Again, we need a unity conversion factor to get rid of these joules. Ks also cancel, as do kilojoules, and we get that M is 18.1518 kilogram per kilomole, but I would write my final answer to four significant digits. We can also do gram per mole instead of kilogram per kilomole, since there's a factor of a thousand on both the top and bottom. This would be my final answer. Just a few comments here, compared to air, where M was 28.97 kilogram per kilomole, this gas is much lighter. It is also a good habit to do all your analyses this way. Specifically, show your units in all the equations, and be aware of significant digits. Typically, we give answers to three significant digits in engineering analyses. And finally, as I've already mentioned, keep extra digits when you're doing algebra with previously calculated values. Notice that I put all these digits here to avoid round off error. And if I needed capital M in another equation, I would use this. But I give my answers to the appropriate number of significant digits, which here is four. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.